So today we are going to discuss decoding the Nyai Sanhita bill. So Nyai Sanhita bill, we are going to study details about this. So recently three bills introduced in Lok Sabha. As you can see here, Indian Penal Code IPC 1860 to be replaced by Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita Bill 2023. Then Code of Criminal Procedure, that is CRPC 1973, to be replaced by Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksa Sanhita 2023. And Indian Evidence Act 1872 to be replaced by Bharatiya Saksha Bill 2020. So now let's see the main uh, points or you can say uh, key points regarding these bills. First, Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita bill, it will have 350 section, 56 sections, sorry. So this new Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita bill 2020 will be going to have 356 sections instead of 511 sections in IPC. You know, in our Indian panel code, or this IPC, we have around 511 sections, right? And that is a lot. Now it is uh, tried to reduce the number and now we are going to have 350 sections. Then you can see 175 sections have been amended and eight sections have been added and 22 sections have been refilled. So 22 sections have been refilled uh, by considering the fact that they may not be uh, in representing current day scenarios. So that's why they have been refilled. Then new sections, eight sections being added and 176, five sections being amended. That is the Bharatiya Nyay Sanhita bill for uh, replacing the Indian panel code. Now, code of criminal procedure means how to uh, this this code of criminal procedure CRPC actually have those procedures by which is some if some crime is committed then how the actually police is going to deal with that particular crime. So now that is to be replaced by Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksa Sanhita. Remember, don't be confused with the name Bharatiya Nyay Sanhita for the Indian Penal, Penal Code, but Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksa Sanhita for Code of Criminal Procedure. Now, this new Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksa Sanhita is going to have 533 sections instead of 478 sections in CRPC. So, initially, or you can say currently, we have in CRPC 478 sections. Now it is going to be increased. See, 533 sections will be there. Then 160 sections have been changed. Nine sections have been added and nine sections have been refilled. Then Indian Evidence Act 1872, because you know our uh, law, law and order system that is mainly based on evidences, right? So this Indian Evidences Act 1870 to deals with those things. Now, this act will be replaced by Bharatiya Saksha Bill 2023, and it is going to have 170 section instead of 167 sections in IEA. Then 23 sections have been changed, and one section added, and five sections being revealed. Okay, you just got it that three bills, Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita Bill in place of in the IPC and then Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita in place of CRPC and then Bharatiya Saksha Bill that is in place of Indian Evidence Act. Now, what are the key highlights of this bill? You know, this tea bill been introduced in the Lok Sabha. Now, that is going to totally, uh, you can say, a sense, bringing a sense to our uh, criminal justice systems, various sections being renamed also. Now, what are the key highlights of this bill? BNS bill, shortly you can call it BNS bill. Let's see, first sedition, sedition, okay. Under the IPC sedition, is they are being dealt with the section 124A. So section 124A deals with the offense of seditions and prescribes sentence of life imprisonment or imprisonment which may extend to three years to which fine may be added. Right. That was the IPC section. 
124A dealing with seditions and the terms and conditions like life imprisonment or imprisonment that may be extended to three years with fine. Now, fine may be added. Yeah. Now, in this currently introduced BNS bill, the provision 150 under the chapter pertaining to offenses against the state talks about X and then sharing sovereignty, unity, and integrity of India. See, now it is being properly made clear that in under which conditions uh, it will actually specify sedition cases. Means the, instead of the sedition time directly, now it is saying that offenses against the state. Yeah, we know the sedition means what? You are dealing, uh, you are doing, uh, we are doing something that is against the state interest or you can say against the security of the state so now it is said that uh, this provision 150 of uh bns bill just a minute i need to pick the so got it now uh this provision 150 is talking about offenses against the state or so that is that mean that those are the acts which are endangering sovereignty unity and integrity of india now after sedition the new term being added is the terrorism. So for the first time, the word terrorism is fine under this BNS bill, which was not there under the IPC. So under IPC, you know, we do not have a term like, we do not have a definition of, for this term terrorism. Now this terrorism has been defined in this BNS bill. A terrorism, or you can say terrorist, has been defined as one who commits any act in India or a foreign country with the intention to threaten the unity, integrity, security of India and to intimidate the general public or a segment thereof or to disturb the public order. So it's now proper definition being given. Who are terrorists? Terrorists are those who commit any act in India or any foreign country with the intention to threaten the unity, integrity, and security of India, to intimidate the general public or a segment thereof, or to disturb the public order. Now, in the BNS bill, the offense defamation carries a simple imprisonment of up to two years or with fine or with both or with community service. So in this BNS bill, offense of DF, uh, defamation, you know, no? defamation cases, we have heard many times in this year, in current year, we have had many, we have heard many such cases, right? So this defamation case now is going to carry a simple imprisonment of up to two years, or with fine, or with both, or with community service. Then mob lynching is a very important term. We can see in Assam, in our Assam, in Jurhat, you know, you. I hope you can recall the case that happened, I think, uh, last year only, uh, the mob lynching. Now, we've, uh, we know that if someone kills a person, if one particular person is killing, then that is okay that person can be dealt to it readily or you can say speedily some um, criminals uh, or you can say some laws and orders been taken against that person but what happened if there are uh, a group of persons of around 50 60 like those a group big group who is uh, particularly targeting a person or a group of person or killing them that is what we can we can call as mob lynching. Now, for the first time, capital punishment has been introduced for the offense of mob lynching, apart from the offense being made punishable with seven years of imprisonment or life imprisonment. Now, in the case of mob lynching also, also no one will be rescued. No one will be, you can say, um, no one will, free, uh, will be free if they do such type of heinous crime now seven years of imprisonment or in cases in rare cases also life imprisonment may be also given that is the mob lynching it's a very good thing is now included in our bns bill again sexual exploitation of women on the pretext of marriage job promotion or by concealing identity will now considered as a crime so, sexual exploitation of women, uh, either in the pretext of pretext of marriage or promotion or suppose by concealing identity, now that will be considered a crime and hence dealt deal to it accordingly. Then 
this the new bill omits the provision for the offense of adultery i hope you know what is adultery means adultery again itself is a um, very interesting topic for debate you know what is adultery mean in some another time we'll go for a debate on this particular topic now that's in line with the supreme court's ruling in 2018 in the case of joseph joseph sign versus union of india where section 497 of ipc criminalized adultery was held to be unconstitutional so now this particular adultery see for what it is referring it is referring the supreme court's case um, judgment or in the case of joseph sign versus union of india where section 497 of the ipc that criminalized adultery now was held to be unconstitutional no more constitutional now this is held as unconstitutional then the new bill does not include any punishment for unnatural sexual offenses again man so unnatural sexual offenses mean you know we are talking about uh, like homo or this type of uh, means uh, which are not natural actually uh, so this this no punishment is been included now this bill does not include any punishment and why why this is um, why they are doing means including like that because now they are referring the Supreme Court's unanimous reading down of Section 377 of the IPC as far as it criminalized same-sex relations between consenting adults in Navdes Singh Johar versus Union of India 2018 case. This provision legalizing martial law has, however, retained. So you know about the marital rape we have discussed a lot i think in our previous lectures of the kriyansi so some lectures before the apsc mains now this particular uh, new bill also the provision legalizing the marsh marital rape has however been retained the exception 2 to section 62 that defines the offense of rape reads sexual intercourse or sexual acts by a man with his own wife the wife not bringing under the 18 years of age is not a rape so it means if someone's wife is below 18 years is that may be considered as a rape but if she is means if the wife is uh above 18 years of age when she get an equal to 18 years of age then uh, that the sexual acts by her husband is not going to be considered as rape now the punishment for the offense of murder is covered under the um, provision 101 of the bns bill means bharatiya nyasanhita bill now is going to have a provision 101 that is going to deal with the offense of murder previously or you know in our ipc that was covered under section 303 very famously i think very popular everyone knows that section 302 of ipc stands for the offense of the murder now this is going to be covered under the provision 101101 of the bnsb okay now punishment of murder that is the lifetime lifetime or Death sentence remains an unchanged. Means for murder cases, you know, the punishment is either lifetime imprisonment or death sentence. That remains unchanged. That is not changed. Speedy legal procedure. And now, according to the proposed bill, a charge sheet will, be, will have to be filed within 90 days and the court can give permission for another 90 days. Prop will have to be completed within 180 days and send for trial and after trial judgment will have to be given in 30 days you know in our india main number of cases pending is a very big list you know tarik pe tarik i hope you all know that dialogue from the sunny dolls movie tarik pe tarik that really happens in india now to minimize the or to reduce the number of days for the uh, from the registering of the case up to the uh, means having the adjustment this this is trying to be minimized so that's why it is now proposed that charge sheet have to be filled within 90 days another 90 days may be given so prop to be completed within 180 days and then sent for trial and after the trial within 30 days adjustment should be given okay that is all about this new bills being proposed now what are the way forward you know the currently this nyaya suraksha and chaksha 
IPC, CRPC, and the uh, Evidence Act. So these all these bills means their new versions, Shriya, Suraksha, and Saksha. These are to be reviewed by the Parliamentary Standing Committee, where they would be subjected to rigorous scrutiny and analysis. Yes, this is very much required. You know, before directly, before hurriedly, or you can say before uh, making some bills as act, or you can say um, within a short span of time, but uh, but um, that, that that there may be left with many flaws in such bills if no proper analysis being done that's why now these bills are going to be um, undergoing uh, some kind of rigorous scrutiny and analysis that whether there will be more improvement can be done or whether some uh, additional provision need to be included or whether some provision to be appealed, this type of things or this type of rigorous scrutiny and analysis to be done by a parliamentary standing committee. And this space is very crucial as it provides an opportunity for the stakeholders to deliver it on the potential improvement and address any challenges that might arise during the implementation of this provision. Okay, then whatever the money changes like it, stakeholders and this space is very much required because the process of this bill carries the promise of a transformed judicial landscape, one that seeks to abolish the colonial legacy and embraces us the system that resonates with the aspiration of modern India. See, whatever things we are following in IPC, many sections are from the colonial India, right? Colonial period, sorry. So colonial period. Now our India has been changed a lot. We have we are living in a modern India that is being changed a lot from that India which was under the colonial rule. So this new uh, means justice system should reflect the modern India's aspiration, right? So as the legislative process unfolds, it is hoped that the precision, foresight, and careful consideration will guide the shaping of these laws with their eventual enactment these bills are poised to usher uh, in an area of criminal justice that is responses efficient and attuned to the needs of citizens what type of actually criminal justice system we want we want that criminal justice system which is very much responsive that should not be the case that as as you want case register koilu aru tar kunu dhoronor judgment ba kunu dhoronor response pua nai bahut khomoy goi ase we don't want this type of problem system right we want a responsive system we want some efficient and attuned right and in the spirit of the progress and renewal the journey to, <coughs> sorry, towards the dismantling the colonial legacy within the indian criminal justice system is a port a testament to the nation's commitment to change and an acknowledgement of its history. So the Nyaya, Suraksha, and Saksha will represent it, monu a monumental effort to redefine justice and put in place a framework that aligns with the values and the needs of the citizens of Bharat. Yeah, see, I'm using this term Bharat. I'm going to, uh, again, uh, present you a debate on the name of India or you can say Bharat this topic which is in now in fire you can say in trend we'll go through it don't worry but now for this lecture though, what we have discussed about the Nyaya Sanhita bills, Suraksha and Shaksha bills they how they may actually going to reflect our current India or modern India's aspiration or the needs of the citizen that is actually a Major point of discussion now, or you can say the need of the hour now. We'll see that these deals are going to be uh, bring, going to bring some kind of changes that what actually we want from a responsive or efficient criminal justice system, and we hope a better for the same. Right now, we in the next lecture or in the coming one of lecture, we will go for the title currently that which is in trend bharat and according to me that both this term bharat and india is there and we'll discuss from the article one and we'll go through various points of discussion from that particular discussion topic or debate topic bharat or india so that's all for today thank you thank you very much